Oh my god. If you've seen me in this look before, no you haven't. Hi Ugly, it's me, Pussy, and welcome back to Hot or Rat. And today we'll be reviewing episode 4 of RuPaul's Drag Race All-Star Season 6. Our queens were challenged to perform in the first ever Drag Race halftime show and on the runway category was Frills. I've got frills, they're multiplying. And today's episode is Super Bowl special because we'll be breaking all of that down and comparing each queen's performance to the actual halftime show of the pop star they were impersonating. Come on, historical accuracy. But first, a quick message from today's video sponsor that you won't want to miss. The number one question I've been getting recently is, Bussy, where are you watching All Star Season 6? My answer? On streaming platforms I already pay for, with the help of my good old friend and award-winning VPN, Surfshark. For example, All Star 6 is inaccessible to people that live in the US. But guess what? With the click of a button, I can surf on over to the UK, for instance, and voila! Fish, chips, and RuPaul's Drag Race All Star Season 6. And while I'm over there, I might just catch up on on friends or it's always sunny. I also love Surfshark because it can help protect your identity online, block ads and trackers, and hide your internet traffic from the prying eyes of your internet service provider. That's right, they're watching. <gasps> But wait, there's more. The answer is yes. You can use Surfshark on all of your devices with unlimited device login. And there's no risk in just trying it out because Surfshark offers a 30 day money back guarantee. So if you need a VPN or you're just looking for a better one, then Surfshark is the answer. Click the link in my description and use code BUSSY to get 83% off and three extra months of Surfshark for free. Thanks Surfshark for sponsoring today's video. Now let's toss some pig skin. First up, it's Ginger Man just Fergie Ferg in the 2011 halftime time show. Now, I'll be honest, the first time that I watched this, I struggled with it. That's a lie. I actually hated it. Because <laughs> I was like, this just isn't giving me Fergie. And then I thought about it and I was like, wait, what does give me Fergie? And I watched this halftime performance back and realized that Ginger's performance was actually genius. The look itself is a spot on recreation of what Fergie actually wore. And the choreography, she was giving that crazy eyed face that Fergie was giving the whole time and doing the same robotic movements. Like she actually really did capture the essence of Fergie. And that did take me down a little bit of a rabbit hole in the internet. Remember the P incident? And the NBA National Anthem incident? Anyways, watch the whole thing back, you'll know what I mean. Ginger's performance was wrong in all the right ways. It was hot. <laughs> and on the runway, Ginger has gone with the wind and taken every curtain and sailboat sail she could find with her. I can confidently say this is the best Ginger has ever looked on the runway, across all three seasons of Drag Race that she's been on. There's just something about Ginger in a fully realized look. A great silhouette, amazing makeup, great hair, and I was gagging when Michelle was like, don't change your makeup from this, please. And Ginger just stood there like, thank you. Frankly, she shouldn't give a woo. This look was hot. Next up, touchdown. It's Eureka as Madonna from the 2012 halftime show. I love basketball. Can y'all believe that as iconic as Madonna is and always has been, she didn't do the halftime show until she was like 52 and she killed it. That was also the same year that she party rocked with LMFAO on stage. Oh, and Nicki Minaj was there too. What a year to remember. Anyways, back to Eureka who was doing Madonna. Did she give me Madonna? I don't know. The look is a great recreation, yes. She even did a little like gap tooth paint thing, which was a fun touch to show she was paying attention to the details. But Madonna herself is such a versatile person. She can do so many different things. So capturing her essence, I think is difficult. My original thought that was Eureka's performance felt a little more like Eureka than Madonna herself. But I watched that halftime show back and Madonna was even doing some of those little leg high kick raises that Eureka was doing. So it was kind of accurate. Accurate. But it was also a little strange because she stood in that one spot for the whole 45 seconds. And I'm not sure if that was her fault or if that's just what she was given, but that felt a little lackluster to me. All said and done, the look recreation and effort from Eureka tonight, I'm gonna give a burning up hat. But the performance itself left me a little hung up. I'm gonna give this a rat. But on the runway, yeehaw, good God almighty. This look right here is a darn tootin' good look if I ever did see one. She just looks so cute. I guess like cowgirl stuff is trending right now. We've been seeing a lot of that on the runway, even from Silky a couple episodes ago. There's a lot of personality in this look and you can tell Eureka is having fun with what she's brought to the runway. It's simple and elegant and most importantly, effective. This look is <laughs> Next up, we've got Raja as Diana Ross from 1996 halftime show where, get this, she was helicoptered <laughs> off of the stadium and into the sky while she was singing Take Me Higher. 
but concerning Raja. The look itself, a great recreation of what Diana was actually wearing, but dragged up a little. The performance that she gave though felt a little muted, for Diana at least. I feel like normally she's running around the stage, you know, going to every single part of it and owning the whole entire thing. Raja's performance was all just like waist up, hand rolling, and you know, doing that kind of stuff. Interestingly, I timed each queen's performance and Raja only had 37 seconds of airtime. Every other queen had like 45 to above 50. So that could also explain maybe why it felt like this performance was missing something, because it literally was. But even in those 37 seconds, I did want Raja to just take me a little bit higher. I'll leave this performance at a warming and on the runway, she's looking for Prince Charming. This look would have gone great in the season 12 tool runway. The frills on this are really pretty. And as a matter of fact, it kind of reminds me of the dress that Jada wore, except filled in at the bottom. It's a gorgeous gown. She looks amazing. My only complaint is that I would like to have seen a little bit more signature Raja O'Hara on this. Like, I wanted her to just take it to that next level and let me know that this is custom couture for her. Because I feel like a lot of different queens could have put this on and looked just as pretty. That said, I do think this look is hot. <laughs> Next up, there's a Yara in the closet. Oh, She's doing Shakira from the 2020 halftime show. Concerning what Jada did, the look itself is not exact. Um, I'm not really sure why she chose to wear pants. I think that was very unnecessary for this. This feels more like a general belly dancing outfit than it does actually something made for Shakira. Although the overall effect combined with the hair is like, yeah, that's Shakira. And the funny thing about this performance is I actually did a live reaction to this over on my Patreon at patreon.com slash bussyqueen. That's my members only website where my Patreon family can get exclusive member benefits like early access to my videos, exclusive videos, access to the Bussy Queen Discord server, and more. The link to join is in the description of this video. And in that reaction, I loved this performance. Like I was so into the belly dancing that I wasn't even paying attention to the dead face that she was serving. And I hate to say it, but the judges were right. She didn't give any of the smiling, happy, radiant energy that Shakira gives when she's on stage. So considering that, this performance was definitely a rat. But Jada never stopped belly dancing. I think even Shakira would be proud of that. And over on the runway, Jada heard frills, connected that to Gone with the Wind, and then connected that to windmills. <laughs> Only Jada Sophia would do that. This look she came out in on its own, I think is stunning. I love that she is a windmill. It's giving me the hairography that I love Jada for. And this is the type of signature thing that I'm looking for from these queens runways. Like only Jada would wear this and I love that. But let's call a spade a spade. There's not a single frill on this outfit and I think not meeting the bare minimum of the runway requirement demands that I give this look a rat. As much as I do enjoy it and in any other category or place, I would say that it's hot. Next up, she kissed a girl and the feeling is mutual. She liked it. It's Scarlet Envy doing Katy Perry from the 2015 halftime show. Firstly, I miss when Katy Perry had long hair. But let's get back to Scarlet. The reveal from Left Shark to the Katy Perry outfit was genius. I think her doing that shows intention, smartness. She's thinking about what she's doing and how to entertain both the judges and the audience at home. And I also want to give Scarlett kudos for attempting to change her makeup a little bit to give a Katy Perry illusion. And the performance itself was perfect. This was studied, whether she learned it there from Jamal or practiced it back at home before she ever went on the show like this was Katy Perry and you could not tell me otherwise. However, I think this is also a great point in this video to point out that the choreography, music, and sets of each queen certainly were not equal. Scarlett had a full 53 seconds of performance time, I think the most out of these queens, enough time to perform as Left Shark and then also perform as Katy Perry. That said, I think it's also important to acknowledge that she had a more complicated set and also nailed every aspect of it. Scarlett reminded me that I once had teenage dreams. They're all dead now. This performance was hot. And on the runway, I do declare, bitch, shut the front door. You look so effing good. It's giving me like early 1900 vibes, but modernized with the sheerness of the frilly tool that she's wearing. And I love that she has combined that with the harder rhinestone little breast piece and also rhinestone lip. I also love that Scarlett is making hats like her thing. This look was hot. Next up, Walk This Way. It's Kylie Sonique Love as Steven Tyler from his 2001 halftime show with 
Britney Spears. Hashtag free Britney. Firstly, I will say the illusion that Kylie has done here is phenomenal. This is a fully grown woman in full drag king drag, and she looks great. Is the look exact to what Steven Tyler was wearing back in his original performance? No, but I also don't think that would have been a good choice to do that because it's literally just like a sports jersey. She made the correct decision to expand upon Steven Tyler's, I think, personal brand of fashion in her own unique way and absolutely killed it. But but she's another queen that was basically given like three square feet of space to move around in and mama she writhed in every square foot of that three square foot box. I think the other queen should be taking notes because this is how you take limited choreography and turn it into something truly special. Her performance gave me kings and queens. It was hot. <laughs> Side note, have y'all seen the shenanigans that Kylie's been up to with Miley on stage recently? World tour coming when? I'll be there. And on the runway, why don't you come around and sting me sometime? Kylie Again, looking flawlessly, stunningly beautiful. I love what she's done. She also did that kind of hard and soft play with the jellyfish frills and the big pearlescent breast piece. She looks just... Hmm. This look is hot. Next up, we have Janduin Gaga from the 2017 halftime show where she literally jumped from like 300 feet in the air and then was lowered down on cables to the stage on the football field. Nobody makes an entrance like Gaga or Laganja, and no one makes an exit like Diana Ross. Firstly, the illusion is accurate. The outfit is a great recreation, down to the little makeup eye sticker things that she's wearing. She may even be wearing the House Laboratories stickers that Gaga released with the Amazon thing. Have to double check that one. And concerning the actual performance, it was crazy, but it was the perfect pick for Jan. Honestly, maybe the only choice for Jan. She needed somebody with crazy, jarring choreo to put all of that frantic energy into, and she absolutely nailed it. And this was another instance of a queen being given more stage, uh, I guess, free range to play with. Like, she kind of went all over the place and did a lot of stuff. But like Scarlett, she rose to the occasion. Jan, I'm speechless. This performance was hot. And on the runway, can can you see what I see? <laughs> She's giving me burlesque, a little vaudevillian, lady of the night. I do think this is a really strong look, but <laughs> I feel the way I feel about this like I do about many of Jan's looks. You could put them on anyone and I just really feel like the outfit is wearing her. It's gorgeous and she looks great, but where is the Jan Jan in the can can? I really just want her to pick something that is instantly recognizable and stick with it. For me, for example, it's that I wear really cheap clothes from Amazon. <laughs> But on a real note, I think she would do well to maybe study some of her peers in the competition like Scarlett, Kyria, Eureka, and Kylie, who I think really have mastered their personal brands. Anyways, yes, yes, this look is hot. hot. Next up, we have Akaria C. Davenport doing Prince from the 2007 halftime show. The look here that she has entered the stage with <laughs> is a um, good recreation, but I would maybe call this more of an inspired adaptation. That said, I don't mind it at all. It definitely looks and reads like Prince, and the colors are right the general silhouette is correct, but, <laughs> and it's a big one, when she turns around and reveals those butt cheeks, I was wondering maybe is that what the judges weren't liking? Like it was too Acaria branded and not Prince branded? Because when I watched this the first time, I loved it. And I really struggled with what the judges were saying about her performance and was like so confused why they put her in the bottom. And then I rewatched it a second time and I still loved it. <laughs> and then I rewatched it again and I still loved it. And I was like, okay, the judges are just smoking crack or looking at one. <laughs> Akaria, girl, you got the look. This performance was hot. And on the runway, she's reached her final digivolution. It's Akaria C. Lilimon. Mama, she gave it all this week. She danced her heart out on that stage, and then she had the gall, the gumption, the audacity to serve this hard on the runway? I'm gagged. I was a little nervous when she walked out and was totally covered up. I was like having Jasmine Masters hiding herself in that giant tube flashbacks. But as soon as she started blooming, I was like breathing a sigh of relief, a little bit of pollen. It was like, oh my God, she looks so gorgeous. The flower on her head, amazing. And I love that this is at the same time also like a performable look. It's got that, uh, you know, dance energy to it, but it's also a stunning runway. It it's a great combination that definitely says a curia to me. Oh my, 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 this look is hot. Next up, we take a trip back in time to see Pandora Box doing Carol Channing in 1970 as the 
first celebrity to perform at the halftime show of the Super Bowl. Talk about OG. Unfortunately, there's no digitized video of her actually performing in this, but the internet does confirm that she was there. What I can tell from the like one or two photos that do exist of Carol in this look, Pandora got the look right. And this was such a great choice for Pandora because it taught the younger part of the audience like me something new and then also played to her strengths of impersonating Carol Channing. Remember, she's already proved herself in that original Snatch game. She kind of just had to do what she already did again. This performance was hot. And on the runway, I have a feeling this look is going to be very divisive. It's, I think, intentionally ugly, but at the same time, very cute. It's giving me that 60s baby doll kind of look. It reminds me a little bit of what the little girls, the twins, were wearing in The Shining too, which I love. I don't think it was referencing that, but that's what I thought of. I think it's difficult to do and was bold of her to do something so uh, in intentionally ugly that was also super successful for her drag character. She's giving us like the original Toddlers and Tiaras fan to see. This look is hot. Next up, who runs the world? Trinity. She's doing Beyonce from the 2013 halftime show. Look, if you've ever seen Beyonce live, you know that doing Beyonce is a tall order. Hell, if you've ever watched a music video, you know that too. Her choreography is simple, but extremely difficult because it's so technical and sharp and intentional and the way she moves just commands your attention. Anyways, this is high praise when I say that Trinity mastered both the illusion of Beyonce, the look, hair, makeup was all very correct, and the choreography. From the second I saw her step out of the stage and do that little like shoulder thing that Beyonce does, do I look like Beyonce? <laughs> I was sold. It also didn't hurt her that her mix was mixed amazingly and had all of the booms, the bangs, the clings, and the clangs that Beyonce's music kind of does to go along with that powerful choreo. Trinity had big shoes to fill. Thankfully, she's a man in a wig. <laughs> This performance was hot. P.S. Trinity, if you start touring as a Beyonce illusionist, I will be there. Trust. And on the runway, she says she's serving overcooked salmon. <laughs> Mama. Overcooked salmon has never looked better. I think like impersonating Beyonce, there is just an extra level to pageant drag that is hard to achieve and honestly underappreciated, I think, by a lot of fans of drag who watch the show and sort of cast aside the pageant queens. So it really makes me happy when someone like Trinity can come out on the stage looking this goddamn gorgeous and sell it to these kids who may not like this genre. I also love that she didn't hit us over the head with frills. She did her own thing. It was like a little understated going along the hem of all the little pieces that were interconnected. Just elegant, gorgeous, eloquent, glamdiculous. Trinity, this was hot. Now let's do a little analysis. In the top, we have Jan, Trinity, and Eureka. Jan takes the win. In the bottom is Akira and Shada. This was strange to me because Eureka definitely didn't feel like a top and Akira definitely didn't feel like a bottom. But I want to remind you, this is one of those challenges where the producers can kind of reset this show and push storylines and set things up for the rest of the season. And what I mean by that is most of these performances by these queens were actually out of their control. They were given a mix created by somebody else in choreography, mostly designed by Jamal Sims. They pretty much just had to study the materials and serve a little bit of face. And I'm not saying that was easy to do, I'm just saying there wasn't a lot in their personal control. But removing that control from the contestant level and bringing it up to the producer level does allow them to do certain things. Personally, I think they could have justified that third high placement besides Jan and Trinity as any number of girls. Kylie, Akira, Scarlett. And in the same vein, it was easy for them to justify putting Akira in the bottom because so many of the girls did so well that they could sort of hand out general negative critique to pretty much anyone they wanted and justify it. Unfortunately, I don't think this bodes very well for Akira. It could, maybe they're setting her up for like a underdog comeback narrative, or maybe more likely they're just kind of pegging her as the next to go. Which is a damn shame because it gags me that they didn't sort of pick her as somebody that they wanted to push to the top in this season. Concerning Jan, she definitely got her much needed and deserved redemption this episode, and I would have been fine with either her or Trinity winning. This is another week where I honestly don't know how, if I were on that panel, I would have picked between the two. They both killed it. And I wish we didn't have the lip sync assassin thing going on because I think having them battle it out in a final lip sync would have been the perfect way to actually decide a clear winner. As for Yara, I think her bottom placement was correct. She was the weakest of the cast, and I probably actually would have put Eureka or Raja right there with her. Definitely let me know what you thought of the placements this week. Did the judges get it right or wrong? Our lip sync assassin is
was Jessica Wilde. This was a little bit out of left field and honestly almost too perfect because like how often is Rue going to get the opportunity to have like one of his queens send home their best friend unknowingly? Like the drama of that is unreal. But Jessica definitely deserved that win by a mile. And my hottest on the runway this week goes to Scarlet Envy. I also asked my patrons over on patreon.com to vote for their hottest hot. And this week they've chosen Acaria C. Davenport. I want to say thanks so much to you for watching this video and remind you to hit like and press subscribe. I also want to say thanks to today's video sponsor, Surfshark, and my generous patrons who make my channel possible. I also want to give a special shout out to Tanner Never Settles, Me Neither, Maribel Rose, Kevin, Sonia Sager, and Rachie, who all just joined my Patreon at the tier. And Aiden Smith, Anna Miriam, Anthony, Aquamarina, August Everywhere, B-Rolls, Bradley, Cameron, Cherry Poppins, Christopher, Cleo Moosdale, Delani Deseo, Deutsche Leather, Dr. Martin, Evan, Bractalize, GJ Bearclaw, Got the Morbs, Jay, Jenny, Gen X, Jonah, Johnny, Giovanni, Kevin, Kiki, and John, Madam Muffy, Markowitz, Millennial, Yes Event. Nathan, Opal, Pasqual Nava, Ron, Shannon, Sky, Sultan, Tammy, Thomas, Timotheus, Tony, Travis, Tyler, Vendetta, and Wheely, who were all supporting me at my hottest hot tier. And Ali Al, Angel, Caroline, Cyrus, Felicia, Godie P, JB, Joseph, JP in Dallas, Laura, Nurse Luca, Matthew, Robert Reeves, Scooby Snacks, Sailor, Stephen, Tom Jaco, Tom Young, and Triton, who were all supporting me at my Bussy Queen Collector tier. See y'all later. Love ya. Bye. Uh, oh, burpee queen.